Hi everyone, this is Brian Hayes and welcome to a brief discussion on common chords for the saxophone. Today I'm going to take you quickly through the four common chord families for all instruments, major, minor, augmented and diminished. Now I've already posted a standalone tutorial on seventh chords for the saxophone. Please check that out if you haven't done so already because I won't cover that ground again here today. Seventh chords are perhaps the most common chord that you'll find in the blues, in jazz and in rock and roll. So make sure you understand seventh chords and check out my tutorial on that. Let's start with major chord. A major chord is created when we play the first, third and fifth note from a major scale simultaneously. Now today I'll be demonstrating everything on my B flat tenor saxophone and I'll be speaking in the key of this instrument. So when I say a, a C major scale I'm talking about a C major scale played on the B flat instrument. If you're watching this tutorial and you play the E flat alto or the E flat baritone saxophone you just need to convert everything that I'm saying into the key of G for you. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later in the tutorial. So let's start with a C major chord. C, E and G. Now on the saxophone and on any of the wind instruments we can only play one note at a time. So technically what I just played there is a C major arpeggio. So C major, 1, 3, 5 out of a C scale, a C scale the first five notes of a C scale are C, D, E, F and G. And if you take your time and count those notes, C was the first, E was the third, G was the fifth. Okay, minor chords, the second most common chord family in music. A minor chord is a one note change from a major chord. The formula is one, three flat, five out of the major scale. So if we go back to those notes of the C major scale, the first note was C, the third was E, but now we've got to play E flat. We have to lower that E a semitone, and the fifth remains G. So a C minor chord is simply C, E flat, and G. Now even though it's only a one note change, I'm sure your ears have detected that it's an incredibly different sound. And it's something you should really master early on in your saxophone playing career. That is to be able to quickly change from major to minor. So if I now play a C major arpeggio and immediately follow it with a C minor arpeggio, it'll sound like this. <laughs> That's a simple change to make, but it's only simple if you have muscle memory and that you've worked out the notes to play and that your body is used to getting your fingers around those in a hurry. So I strongly recommend that you become very competent at changing from a major chord to a minor or the other way around. Okay, augmented chords are far less common than major or minor, but they're out there in all types of music. The formula for an augmented chord is 1, 3, 5 sharp. So if we go back to our C scale, C was the first note, E was the third, G was the fifth. So this time to play a C augmented chord, we need to play C, E and G sharp. Now augmented chords are largely passing chords. They're not the type of chord that you'll sit on for 8 or 16 bars. But you do need to know how to play them. And if you want to be a good improviser, the whole tone scale matching the augmented chord is a very common tool to use in jazz. Okay, finally we come to the diminished chord. Now the rule for a diminished chord is 1, 3 flat, 5 flat. So it takes the concept of a minor chord a little bit further. A minor chord, as you'll recall, is 1, 3, flat, 5, but this time we have to also flatten the fifth note to play a diminished chord. In the key of C, those notes will be C, E flat, and G flat. And of course, G flat is just another name for F sharp, but you should refer to it as G flat. So here's a C diminished chord. <laughs>
again, not a chord that you will base a melody on, like Somewhere Over the Rainbow or something like that. You'll probably find that your diminished chords are only one or two, maybe four bars long. But again, they turn up in all types of music and you need to be competent in playing major, minor, augmented and diminished chords. I'm going to close this tutorial with an example of me playing the three notes required for major, minor, augmented and diminished chords on the tenor saxophone, but this time I'm not going to be playing them as arpeggios. I've actually recorded multi-track myself here and I'm playing the three notes of the chord simultaneously. So this is an example of what a tenor saxophone sounds like when it is playing major, minor, augmented and diminished chords. But before I do that, I'm going to put that music up on the screen and it's in the key for the B flat instrument. So it's, it'll show you where I simply play a C major chord followed by C minor. I go back to the C major. Then I go to C augmented. I go back to the C major. Then I go to C diminished and I end on the C major. If you happen to be an alto or baritone sax player and you don't have a soprano or tenor sax, all you simply need to do is transpose what I've got on the screen. In other words, instead of playing a C chord on your alto, you need to play a G chord. And what's a G chord? One, three, five out of a G major scale. So a G chord will be G, B, D. The next chord that you'll see is C minor for the B flat tenor saxophone, but that's actually G minor for you if you want to play along with it. So G minor is one three flat out of a G scale. G, B flat and D. The next chord is C augmented, which is G augmented for you. One, three, five sharp out of a G scale. G, B, D sharp. And finally, on the tenor saxophone, it's C diminished, but for you it's G diminished. One, three, flat, five flat out of a G scale. One is G, three flat is B flat, five flat is D flat. D flat's just another name for C sharp, but its correct name in a diminished chord is D flat. So, if you can get your mind around that and just rewind this video, you'll be able to join in now on your alto or baritone saxophone if you choose to, while I'm playing three-part harmony on the tenor saxophone. Nothing clever in this arrangement. I'm just letting you hear what those four powerful chord families sound like when the notes are played simultaneously on a saxophone. My example is on a tenor saxophone. Let's have a listen to that now. There's a six click counting. If you want to play along with me, just pick either the low, middle or high note in the block chords. It's written as if a piano player was playing it. Pick one of those lines and stick with it and play along and enjoy the chord families of major, minor, augmented and diminished. How did you go? Were you able to join along with me and play one of those note lines on the score, either on your alto or tenor or soprano or baritone saxophone? I hope so. One of the challenges we have as wind instrument players, if we're new to music, is really getting to understand what chords sound like. As I've said in this tutorial, we're stuck in arpeggio land on a wind instrument. We only really get a feel for chords when we join a section. For example, if we're one of the sax players in a saxophone section, a three, four or five piece saxophone section, well, that's when for the first time we can hear ourselves being part of a chord. I strongly recommend all wind instrument players take up a chordal instrument just at the hobbyist level. You haven't got to be an expert piano player or guitar player. But I strongly recommend you experience for yourself, even if on the most basic of instrument like a $50 ukulele, a four string ukulele, 
on which, by the way, you can play just about all of the key important chords that you're ever going to strike in music. So there's really no excuse not to be able to be a chordal instrument player at the most basic level. I really recommend you do that because when you personally play the notes of a C minor chord at the same time, not individually, you'll really feel part of that chord and you'll understand what chords are all about. Okay, I hope you've got something out of this tutorial. I'll put some more online over time where we'll talk about how you can use scales to match the different chord types to help you create your own melodies and improvise. Bye for now.